practically speaking, I may get into your creative process here, but do you have a Google Doc with bullet points of all the different types of puzzle elements? Like let's say this one was shape delineation, then another one with the apple tree is something like visual environmental clue. Yeah. And then another one maybe audio discernment with the yeah. birds chirping. So then do you spoilers, have spoilers, <laughs> everybody? So then do you massive have massive spoilers are happening? Disclaimer. So do you have a Google Doc of a or whatever doc of a bullet point of these are the types of puzzle elements. Now, as I progress no. through the story, I would like to include more and more of these simultaneously. Or does that happen unconsciously? Or do you not even care if that happens? It's different depending on where you are building the thing, right? In the beginning, I'm just like, I want to find enough ideas that even are interesting at all, right? Um, and then... Um, like putting things in, in a spreadsheet or something is not a very, um, I mean, it helps you list them and remember what they are, but the thing is in games, um, it's much better to just build a very early version of the game. And so that's what I did. Like from the very, I would say week, probably week two or three of development of the six and a half year project, I had some version of the game where you could walk around and it was really ugly. Not much to look at, not much there. But then if I made new puzzles, I could just put them there. I could program them, first of all, and then put them there. By programming them, you see how they actually behave and whether there are ideas in there that you didn't think of, um, right? Whereas if it's just written in a spreadsheet, it's not doing anything, so you can't see what it does, right? And so that was the development process, was program new puzzles, put them in the world, if I thought there was going to be an area um, where uh, where things might go, I would just sort of throw them on the map there and we would put walls around it or something and figure it out later. Um, actually, I think it's still up. Uh, we have a, a blog that we were doing that whole time um, and it shows, you can see screenshots of what the game looked like in this state when it was like very plain and ugly and just I believe I was following it back then okay yeah so um that was really the primary method of organization of the game really um you know probably the art team when they were working on stuff had probably some spreadsheets and stuff about who was going to work on what when but like that kind of thing but in terms of the overall ideas of the game it was just there in the game and that's still true with with what we work on now why was it being nonverbal so important to you? Is this something like in filmmaking, there's that adage, don't tell, but show. Is it somehow more pure or less pure if you are direct? It's probably related to the personality aspect that I was telling you about before, where I don't like to talk about some things. Like, um, there are ways of... Um, Like speech is very linearizing, right? Like it goes, whether it's spoken or written, it goes into a series of words that then you listen to and rebuild into something nonlinear in your head, right? And that has a certain bandwidth to it of what you, how much you can do. Um, it actually could be quite high if you and the person you're talking to have shared assumptions about what things mean, then words call back to what those things mean and help you build in a lot. That's, that's why speech works, right? Um, but if you want to tell people about something they don't already know, the, the bandwidth is actually pretty low because you don't have things to refer back to that are, uh, that are big and rich informationally. Um, so that's one thing. But secondly, I was just really interested in this idea of nonverbal communication, and I wanted to see what it could do in the medium of games. Like, is this something that games can do that they have a talent for, right, relative to other media? And I found that it seemed to be so um, because in, in that game, you know, if somebody gets toward the end of the game and they're playing some puzzle that they're stuck on, it looks complicated. And you ask them, what are you trying to do? Tell me everything about what you're trying to do. If they start trying to explain like, well, you know, I'm trying to draw this line to go through this thing and around this thing, but not around that thing because with this thing over here. And if, if they try to explain to you everything that, that they're trying to do, um, 
It could take five minutes actually for, for the late game, right? Um, none of that was ever c communicated verbally ever, right? And, and so that's very interesting. It is an interesting study of what could be done that way. Now that said then also, um, the, one of the things that the game was primarily concerned with was this moment of epiphany that I was talking about before when you understand something that you didn't understand before, right? Like in a puzzle game, when you finally are able to solve the puzzle, hopefully it's not because you did a bunch of brute force things and then you finally accidentally did a thing and it said it's solved. That's not a very good puzzle, right? A good puzzle is you didn't see something, now you see it, and now it's very clear and adds something to your knowledge and you can use that to solve the puzzle and move on to the next thing, right? So I felt like a game that's talking at you all the time was not very helpful because part of, so part of what I was trying to do was, okay, at a very baseline, just give people a positive experience that has that kind of moment of epiphany in it because that's interesting and fun and nice for people, right? One level above that, um, can we create these moments of epiphany from different angles on different topics all the time to give people a sense of what all these topics are, either about space and light and shadow and sound or about abstract notions like, you know, number and group and all these things. Um, can we build an appreciation for that, right? Um, and then maybe one level above that is, can we exercise people's feeling of epiphany in this simple world um, that shares a lot with our world, even though it's a simpler version? So, this game has lights, colors, and shadows, and um, sounds, and our world has these things, in at least in human experience. So, so if we can exercise the feeling of epiphany well and from enough different directions in the field of this game, can that then give people something that they can carry out a little bit, right? That maybe in the real world, they have more of a taste of what this sudden understanding is is like. And maybe that can be interesting to them in some way. And I felt like a game that was just talking to you all the time um, wasn't good for any of those layers, right? Um, especially, I don't know, like if somebody tells you how to do something, you didn't really figure anything out, right? Um, so it's a weird thing too, because one of the decisions that I'm still not sure if it was right, um, was how much talking to have in the game at all, because there are all these recordings, um, from various people that are, the game is like laced with them, but they're kind of all hidden in corners and stuff. You probably have to be deliberately looking for them to find most of them. Um, once, you know, there's a few that are like placed out in the open just to give people the idea that these things are there. Um, and maybe it would have been the right thing to not have any of those and have the game be completely silent. Um, but that didn't feel right to me either. Um, even though it's more pure in a certain way. And, and the original idea of the game was to have a very explicit storyline in it with like a fiction and things that were happening, like a narrator and, and all this stuff. Um, and I cut that because that didn't feel good either. So it's somewhere in this middle ground. But so it's weird because there is talking in the game, but all the talking in the game is not at all about the puzzles ever, right? And mm -hmm. you have to kind of ask the game for the talking because otherwise you won't get it. Um, 